Hi, uh, this is a short demonstration of a new feature in Quarkus and that is container image building using the Quarkus CLI. This is something that improves the actual user experience but also trailblazes some uh, new capabilities and uh, that is the implicit use of extension from the Quarkus CLI. We apply this, uh, this capability in the area of container image building but it is something that can also be applied in other areas too like uh, deployment on Kubernetes, Amazon Lambda and more or setting up uh, pipelines uh, and uh, using Tekton or RMCD or <coughs> pretty much anything that uh, we have a Quarkus extension for. Now, for container image building, the current situation is that for any new project users need to do something like a NVN clean package and then specify that weird uh, system property and they also need to edit the project file pomxml build gradle in order to add the container image extension of choice uh, moreover those uh, weird properties are not uh, easily uh, discoverable users can't just do an nvn help in order to find those properties, usually they will have to search uh, the Quarkus documentation and find uh, the page which is dedicated to container image building and get uh, the properties uh, from there. And uh, what I'm seeing is that even seasoned users often uh, do typos or forget the actual command and uh, this is something that's not ideal. On the other hand, uh, using uh, the CLI instead it's easily, those commands are easily discoverable, so we can see that uh, the CLI provides an image subcommand, which also provides uh, a build subcommand, which supports docker, buildpack, jib, openshift, and more. Now, uh, let me demonstrate uh, this uh, thing. I will use code.quarks.io uh, uh, code in order to uh, create a new Gradle project and uh, once a Gradle project uh, is created I'm going to copy the downloaded zip file and I'm going to unzip the project here let's check uh, the Gradle properties what I'm going to demonstrate is a uh, merged in master but uh, still not released so I will go with a uh, snapshot so let me just change uh, the suggested version to the top snapshot and then also I'm going to need to change uh, the platform group ID now uh, just by doing something like a uh, Quarkus image build. I can see that uh, the image build uh, operation is being triggered. It shouldn't take long. And uh, I can see that uh, I just got uh, the code with Quarkus image build uh, four seconds ago. Now, how this works under the hood is that. Uh, it invokes uh, a new Gradle task that we have for uh, image building, the image build task, and specifies uh, the parameters for the default container image extension, in this case, uh, Docker. It also generates and uses uh, a Gradle init script uh, so that uh, the Quarkus container image docker extension is added to the class path. What I'm showing here uh, works both for Gradle and for Maven, which means that uh, along with the image build Gradle task we have an image build uh, module for Maven. Uh, but since uh, we rarely saw how things work in uh, the Gradle side, uh, I decided to, to use Gradle for uh, this demonstration. Uh, it's important to understand that the actual build Gradle file does not contain anything related to Docker or contain container image building. And uh, if I just want to switch from uh, 
the daughter, which is uh, the default. Oh, by the way, let me just show you the, that the Docker subcommands contain some uh, interesting options that are specific to, to Docker, like uh, specifying a Docker file, for example. Uh, I can pick up uh, another container image extension, say uh, zip. And this time the, uh, the build is being performed uh, by the zip container image extension. In the same spirit, I could use uh, build pack, I could use OpenShift or anything else. And I repeat without having to modify application properties, uh, build Gradle, POM XML, or whatnot. And along with uh, the build commands, we also added some commands uh, for pushing the image. So uh, under the Quarkus image uh, subcommand, we have uh, everything the user needs when it comes to container images. Uh, I hope that uh, you find it uh, useful. I intend in the future to uh, do something similar for uh, deployment, especially uh, for uh, deploying to Kubernetes, uh, OpenShift or other cloud environments. This concept uh, will be definitely uh, very valuable or native OpenShift serverless. Uh, it's going to be really, really uh, useful, uh, mostly because users are, will be able to switch from one platform to the other, from one cloud to the other, without having to modify any kind uh, of code. And especially uh, nowadays with uh, GitOps uh, being a thing, uh, not having to edit project files and uh, tamper and uh, add noise to the commit log is something uh, that is really, really valuable.